So here's the problem with this new rumored camera. The A6600, the ZV-E10, the A7C, the A7 IV, and the FX30 are all in existence in the Sony lineup. Obviously different price points, different reasons, but I honestly don't think any of these cameras matter compared to this camera if my thinking is correct. And I know a lot of people are mentioning specs from, from the Sony a7S 3 but I don't think that that camera or any of these other ones is the camera that this camera has to beat. I honestly think it's something totally different. I think the position of this new camera is gonna be like if the a7C and the ZV-E10 got together, sprinkled with some FX30 goodness on it. And I say with some FX30 goodness on it versus like the a7R Mark V and the a7S 3 that already are existence, already amazing video specific hybrid cameras. This video camera is going to be for creators. So I don't think it's going to have all of those things that we can expect in the video side of stuff, but let's just run through the stuff that we know. And then some of the things that we're seeing on the leaked image with some of the comparisons. And I want to talk about where I think this camera probably will not be everything that we maybe would hope, but I still think it's going to be different than what everybody's thinking. So here's what we know so far. It's going to be 4K60 with no crop allegedly 4k 120 frames per second with no crop allegedly a zve 10 body style something similar but a little bit more upscale to like an a7c body style but something completely different the price they're saying is around $2,500 I don't think that that's right just for some of the things I'll point out in a second but I think that's going to be a little bit too high even if they do spec this camera out and again I'll get to that in a second a 12 megapixel sensor and it's going to have so again some stuff that we've seen with the AI advancements in autofocus and all of the amazing goodness of the Sony a7R Mark V and yada 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 all this stuff is on Sony Alpha Rumors. You've probably already seen that or read it or heard it or seen it in some other videos and if you haven't the link is down below where you can go and see hashtag all the things. So let's talk about this Loch Ness monster quality image that's the leaked image of the camera. I think for what we can see yeah it does have that top body design similar to the ZV-E10. I can even see like it has like the trigger on there but I do think we will have that bigger Z battery that we've all been hoping and praying for. I don't personally mind having the smaller battery. Again, if you've been around this channel, you know, small, lightweight, easy to use is my go-to things. And that's why I love the ZV-E10, shooting on that right now. But just that little bit of a switch on there for the on and off button, instead of it being like a button on the top, I think that is enough extra width on top of the grip. I think it'll stay like that horizontal grip-ish style like the ZV-E10, but I'm hoping it's a little bit more depth to it so that it can fit the Z battery. And I think, like I said, that on and off switch is enough with the zoom rocker and stuff that it should be a substantial enough grip, or I hope at least. We can see that it has like the custom dial similar to what we see on the ZV-E10. That's not the biggest issue. What I'm looking for is again, if it's a mix between a ZV-E10 and an A7C, like I can even see the rounded buttons give that better body design or better body quality. And it's really small difference that on the ZV-E10, the ZV-1F, those cameras, it has flat buttons on it. But on the new one, they're rounded. It's a subtle difference that you see on the Sony A7C. So I think it will have a beefier, better body quality and not just because it's a full frame camera. We can see with the little notch at the top like when you close your camera that if you have a little something to pull the camera out with. So we know it's going to be a fully articulating screen like all of the ZV cameras have been which I don't think ZV means cheap. I think this is going to become like the creator line of stuff that you want. Not quite a hybrid, not the cinema, the video specs and all that stuff just content creators and content creating entrepreneurs, uh, which is primarily who I speak to when I'm talking about cameras and stuff on the channel. I do think we're gonna see a better like quick wheel design because if you've had or played with any of the older Sony cameras, then you know that like the quality slightly differs. I think this is gonna be the one on the A7C and not the one like we've seen on the ZV-1 or even the ZV-E10. I think it's gonna be that uh, higher button quality for that one, but it will be the quick little dial on there. But I do wonder if we're gonna have that secondary wheel that we usually see. It's either gotta be on the front or it's gotta be on the back or something. Because if this camera is gonna be even close to $2,000, just having that top dial like the ZV-E10 is not gonna be enough, in my opinion. I think it's gotta have something else. So from again, this Loch Ness monster quality image, this is as good as it gets. But that leads me to think a few other things. 
about the scammer. The menu button is not a little button like we've seen on the ZV-E10, ZV-1, and all these other cameras, but it's the pill-shaped design that's closer to the center. So because this grip looks a little bit thicker from the on and off switch to the way that pill menu button is and all that different stuff, when you just think about how Sony traditionally lays their camera out, I really think we're gonna have where, because of, again, you gotta think with how you're gonna navigate the camera and like from the rear of it, if it's a little bit wider, your hand is naturally falling here for where the menu's gonna go, then it has to mean that the body is a little bit thicker, but I don't think it's gonna be two card slots. I think it'll be the one dual card slot, the one that takes those type A cards that handles the faster read speeds and probably for some photo stuff, but it won't be photo centric, especially if this is going to do 4K 60, allegedly, and 4K 120p without a crop, allegedly, but I think that may come with some time limits. And again, allegedly. So let's get down to the stuff that we don't know about this camera. Now, as we get closer to this week deadline, this camera will be announcing. We already have Sony confirming it essentially with them saying that it's gonna be a vlogging style camera. I sincerely hope all the rumors of it being like a fixed lens version is wrong because I think that's just a, such a waste to the stuff that you could do. Granted, it's always pros and cons to everything, but I really, really, really think that this camera deserves to be an interchangeable lens camera but I digress. So everybody's talking about how the specs for this camera is close to the Sony a7S Mark III and like it's getting closer to that but the FX30 was a bee's knees hall of fame camera and it's like one ultimate reason why I kind of did not pull the trigger on that. The price is amazing, the specs are amazing, it's not a camera I probably won't get anyway but I was waiting to see what else Sony had up their sleeve. Now the a7IV is a $2,500 camera which I think we're going to see a price drop on that camera because it's a 4k 60 camera with a crop albeit full frame amazing bees knees halls of fame stuff we'll probably see some stuff shared from the a7 IV from that hybrid experience come over like the depth mapping and all that stuff for autofocus that's nice i think we'll see some of those things but this is a 12 megapixel sensor if the a7c fx3 cameras have that 12 megapixel sensor obviously rolling shutter is not an issue anymore because that will be corrected ibis should be improved because on those newer cameras it's not really an issue anymore so that should be corrected but here's the kicker. If you come from a camera like the a7 IV, if you're coming from an FX30 style camera or even just the a7 III from way back whenever, those cameras are amazing. But the megapixels were enough that you could punch in and do a lot with the APS-C mode. The a7C and the a7S III didn't do that so well. Like you could do it on the a7C but not on the a7S III because the a7S III, you can't use crop mode on that. Granted, there's going to be some full frame snobs in the comment section, I'm sure, saying why they don't care about it. Great for you and Merry Christmas, but for everybody else in the world, crop mode is beneficial for, again, when you want to punch in. And like when I was at Social Media Marketing World last year and I was wanting to punch into the singer, I was using the A7C and those are super handy. I was already using the 70 to 200. So you got range on top of range on top of range and then you add on clear and zoom. We're going to miss out on having that ability. And I, for one, would miss that. But that's why I say, I think the price is wrong just because the sensor is good and the 4k 60 and 120 specs are there i think this is going to change with how available sony makes their 4k 60 and 4k 120 cameras allegedly here's why i think that because 4k 60 is like right now in the camera space we're not seeing it a ton or even 4k 120 but i think we're at that place where we should so it's going to become normal so everybody's saying like 2500 to 3000 if there are good reasons why that price could be right but I think it's going to be wrong because none of the Sony cameras in the lineup is what this camera has to compete with. It's honestly the Panasonic S5 Mark II, and that's a $2,000 camera. And if I know Sony like I know Sony, they have been competitive for years. They do not like anybody to go specs for spec, dollar for dollar, and they not have a serious contributor to the space. Right now, the only camera in that range, that price range sub $2,000, is the Sony FX30. They 
have to have number one another hybrid mystery camera that has to be something that fits that two thousand dollar range because at the a7 IV again being as amazing as it is the fx30 still kicks its butt a little bit and it's at a cheaper price point so again we're starting to see that 4k 60 4k 120 become more accessible now at full frame we don't have that great sweet spot the a7c mark ii i think this could be a nice handsome replacement for it i hope it has that built-in eyepiece because some people do like it I don't care for it, but it doesn't matter to me. It could be on there, it cannot be. I just hope we have a really good screen. But because the Panasonic S5 Mark II exists, it has the great IBIS, it has the most reliable Panasonic autofocus that we have seen, it has all kinds of stuff, and even other Sony users and other creators that use like Fuji, Limp is not so much a part of the conversation anymore, or OM Digital. Everybody that's using these other brands, they're like, that camera's worthy of being picked up because it's good. So just to recap on some of the Panasonic S5 Mark II specs for video, I'm not going to pay attention to photo stuff because it's going to be a video centric camera anyway, but here's some of the stuff that the S5 Mark II has right now at sub $2,000. H.264 and H.265, 6K 30 frames per second, 420 10-bit recording, 422 10-bit recording, Cinema 4K, 4K 60422 10-bit unlimited, dual UHS-2 SD card slot a weather sealed body and it now has reliable autofocus which was literally the only thing that Panasonic needed to add to their cameras for everybody to say finally I want to get one now because Panasonic lenses are way better and accessible you don't have issues with the clarity or with the color like everybody that's tried a Panasonic camera that I've seen whether they're a professional or a creator there's something everybody loves about Panasonic but the autofocus was a huge crutch not anymore the the fact that we have all of that stuff under $2,000, I don't think Sony's going to sit lightly on that and just say, oh, we don't mind making another camera that's $2,500. I think this camera is going to be priced comparatively. And, and also, I could be wrong with the two card slot things. It literally could be two SD card slots because the A7S 3 was, the A7C wasn't but the a7 III was. And here's why I mentioned those three. You have the Bees Needs Hall of Fame video camera, A7S III, has it. The A7C underneath $2,000 or whatever it costs, didn't have it. The width of those cameras is not that different, enough to where they could or could not add it. But they've been doing this, and I think we're going to see them perfect this. Now, there's some rumors on Sony Alpha rumors saying this camera overheats slightly. I do not think it's because it's 4K 60 or 4K 120 in the camera. Number one, it doesn't have the fan. So that's a granite. It doesn't have the bigger body style. So that's a granite number two. But I don't think it's just because it's 4K 60 and 4K 120 because they already pulled that off with a smaller sensor on the FX30. So it's doable. So the fact that this camera is a low light beast sensor they're already used to, all this technology and stuff they already have and are great at, I think it might be because we have dual card slots in there and the heat dissipation is not all figured out and again this is just rumors but I don't think that's something that's going to be a long-term issue that's something that's usually an issue for a little while and then afterwards you're good. I really do hope though that we have a much better screen on this camera and again I don't think the pricing for this is right. I think we're going to get a bunch of new things or maybe again buttons from A7C, a body design that's mirroring the A7C, the ZV-E10 cameras, some specs from the FX30 and A7S Mark III and A7R5 autofocus and all the other amazing things. I think this is going to be their new new a7 III style camera that is going to have everybody drop their jaw and say for 15 or 1800 dollars maybe even for 12 or 1300 dollars you can have all of this the money really isn't so much so in the camera bodies because they already made a ton of money from a lot of people switching to Sony or at least picking a body up the money is in the glass so this is a full frame camera we have a crap ton of Sony glass that is not going on sale. So I don't think the camera body is what they're so much so worried about. Now in a press release, Sony did mention that they're going to be focusing more on the APS-C bodies, but I think this one is just kind of going to be the gateway to what we probably will see in some kind of ZV-E10 APS-C successor that's still a creator intermediate, not quite advanced level creator camera that brings way more things to the playing field. Maybe it doesn't have IBIS 
service or whatever but i hope that it will because i think that's kind of like something that needs to be a standard because this is going to be a creator centric camera i think we're looking at 15 or 1800 dollars it's my wild theory I have no other reason or justification other than the stuff that i mentioned uh in this video i think this is going to be the camera that makes everybody say sony did it again not they just made a camera that's really great but that sony made a bees knees hall of fame camera like when the a7 III dropped like when the a7s3 dropped the fx30 and now it's going to be the zve1 that's like the top of the line creator camera i don't think that we are not going to get like a good hybrid camera i think this may replace the a7c because good idea weird execution a little bit but still cool obviously new menu touch systems and all that stuff but i honestly think this camera is going to be ridiculously cheap for what it offers so that sony could say we're the king and we're always going to be the king and just you know what i'm saying like that competitive theory that's at least my thoughts i've been sharing all of my thoughts let me know what do you think where do you think the price point is going to be where is it going to be missing certain features just let me know your thoughts but those are mine for the zve1 this is my new book the one right video if you haven't picked it up make sure you do so i got to meet a lot of y'all in san diego at social media marketing world if you came if you got a book thanks for being there i really appreciate you make sure you click on the link down in the description if you want to pick up a copy of this and people have been asking about the signed author pre-orders that we talked about before just to talk to you a little bit about that yes we're still doing those obviously not a pre-order because the book is out but we are still doing uh, those packages the timelines just got crazy and social media marketing world and all that stuff happened before and the book came out like two weeks ago so so a lot more goodies and stuff on the way let me know if you want one of those boxes those will be becoming available very 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 shortly even with the zve1 coming out i still think there's a hybrid camera somewhere in the lineup that has to be made that's better spec wise than the a7 IV not the body design that the zve1 will have because 12 megapixels is not quite enough for our photo friends but i think this year is going to be a good year let me know what you think down in the comments i'll see y'all on the next one peace are you an entrepreneur struggling to get your brand noticed through video content? Look no further. The One Right Video is the ultimate guide to creating videos that will amplify your brand and grow your business. It's jam packed with practical tips and strategies to help entrepreneurs just like you succeed in video content creation. Don't let your competition get ahead. Mark your calendar for March 1st and be among the first to get your hands on a copy of the One Right Video. Go to onerightvideo.com.